Hey, I'm Tantan. This is my voxel game that I'm basically making from scratch with the Rust programming language and the Bevy game engine. Now I say voxel game, but really the only thing I've been working on since I started this project is voxel engine technology. Don't get me wrong, you need a voxel engine to make a voxel game. But the thing is, my voxel engine is good enough to ship with the game now. Kind of. Chunks load in pretty fast, we have biomes implemented, baked ambient occlusion. This is well beyond a minimum viable voxel engine. The only thing missing now is gameplay. There is no gameplay. Since my last devlog I have not written one single line of voxel engine code. No multi-threading, no mesh generation, no graphics programming, no data compression. The code I've written is all about gameplay. I want some enemies in the game. How about the crab? Of course it's a crab, it's the unofficial rust mascot. Model it in block bench, spawn an entity, add the model to the entity, slap on some physics, bam we got some creatures. I'm not gonna make a whole spell system right at the start. I'm making the most stupidest, easiest implementation I can. I wanted to shoot some stuff, that's easy. On the mouse press, spawn an entity, it's gonna be a lovely little cube. I made a projectile system and added that component to the entity and bam, we got projectiles. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't easy at all. I ray cross from the screen, find the position where it's going to land, then I calculate the velocity it needs to have. Okay, it wasn't easy, but it was fun. Maths! Fast forward, I kept adding things with my build first, refactor later mentality. I wasn't also only making a spell system now, I realized I needed AI for my crabs so my crabs can chill out and fight back. The only AI I've ever programmed is date machines. But for this project, I'm gonna explore every option I have basically, well, kind of. How does Unreal Engine work? What are behavior trees? How many videos on AI can I watch in a day? Turns out, a lot. This Rust library seems really awesome, but how in the world do I I integrate this into Bevid, you know, the game engine I'm using. Wait a minute, stop! What happened to my build first, refactor later mentality? I'm spending way too much time just researching AI without writing AI. I'm just gonna pick an AI library. Ha! This one's actually made for Bevy. It's called Big Brain. Why don't I make it work first and then I see if I like it? Say hello to my farming simulator. Yeah, this is the test I made to evaluate if this is a good AI library. I had a good first impression, so I added this to my voxel project. With like 30 lines of code, I can design an entire new creature brain. It's insanely cool. But before I explain how it works, you might be interested in my sponsor, Quadratic. Quadratic are building an open source spreadsheet for engineers and data scientists. Built in Rust, WebAssembly and WebGL. If you thought spreadsheets couldn't get any better, well take a look on this. You can pick what formula language to use, Python, JavaScript, SQL or the standard Excel-like formulas. Because the data crunching is executed in WebAssembly and the UI is built with WebGL, it is blazingly fast. Scroll around with 60 FPS, smooth pinch to zoom in all modern browsers. I'm excited to say Quadratic is hiring. They are looking for Rust developers to develop the core technologies powering their software. People with WebGL experience to develop their user interface and people with experience developing React or Express applications for developing Quadratic's cloud functionality. If you are interested in working with new technologies that can transform a massive industry, Quadratic is the place for you. Start their open source GitHub page, check out their job openings at careers.quadratic.to. Thank you Quadratic for supporting this channel. I have two crabs in my game, one has a ranged attack, one has a melee attack. They are identical in code, except for the thinker. The thinker is basically the crab's brain. Let's take a look on this action called idle steps. Idle has three different actions in sequence. The first action will pick a random position within the spawn area. The second action is to move to this set position. This action will continuously execute until the crab reaches its location. The last action is simply to wait between 0.8 seconds to 4 seconds. I can change the order of stuff if I want, and if I feel really spicy, I can make the idle sequence cast spells in the middle of the sequence. This is how we compose behaviors. Let's take a look on the combat steps. These actions will happen if the crab is hostile to the player. First the crab will move towards the hostile target. This action executes until we are within two length units. After that we'll aim towards the player. Here we can fiddle with some settings so we can make it have bad aim, we can make the aim speed fast or slow. After the aim condition is satisfied, we can finally cast a spell. That is the combat sequence, and the only difference between Crab 1 and 2 is what spell their thinker will cost. 
that is what the crab can do, but when does it idle, when does it attack? That's the job of the scorers. This is known as a utility AI system. The highest score wins, and their action is performed. In the crab example, the idle step score is always set to zero, aka we don't really care when it idles. Now to do the combat steps, I have made this scorer that is set to 1 if it is hostile to another entity, or 0 if it doesn't have an aggressive entity. It's not that complicated under the hood, I simply have a component that may or may not have a reference to a hostile entity ID. You can think of a score as, how much do I want to do this action? Then the thinker will pick the highest score and perform that. Of course the actions and scores I'm using are things I've had to implement, which is easier said than done. For example, the run towards hostile creature action has to take account that maybe we stop being hostile whilst the action is executing. Maybe the entity we are aggressive towards died whilst running towards it. These are cases these actions have to handle, not the cleanest looking code, but now that this action is written, the cool thing now is that we can play around with this aggressive entity component, and AI will react appropriately. For example, maybe I have a spell that drops the aggro of all enemies. All the spell needs to do is to set the aggressive entity to none on the creatures that should drop aggro. The spell doesn't have to interact with the AI in any way, the AI will simply react to what happens to the world. Another example is the code that makes the creature become hostile to the player when the player casts a spell on them. This is all the code that makes that happen. I listen to spell events in the world, I find the entity that the spell is being applied to, and I set their aggressive entity to the caster entity of the spell. If I remove this tiny bit of code, tada! The creatures doesn't mind that you are blasting them with projectiles. My implementation of AI is pretty easy to talk about, but the majority of my time spent on this project was actually spent on building the spell system. For my game, it was important that I designed a spell system that will allow any creature in the world, including the player, to cast any spell. I can finally reveal my combat game design plans. In my game, one way to learn spells will be to wear certain equipment. Maybe you have a staff of fire that has the fireball spell attached to it. You can always cast fireball when the staff is equipped. You will however learn this spell over time, so you can use it without the staff. A fun game mechanic I wanna try out is what if you dropped the equipment and an enemy creature picked it up? Well, they would have the power to cast that spell. Imagine the possibilities. I can't wait to implement this into the game. I know, I know, it's kind of pointless to talk about things I haven't implemented yet, but I wanted a quick break in the video from the code talk, because now I will explain how I implemented spells. <clears throat> uh, briefly. <laughs> Now, implementing a spell system isn't only about managing cooldowns. Animations is actually a large part because you want spells to trigger at certain animation frames. You also need to handle different ways of casting spells, like spells you need to hold down to charge up, or spells that happens instantly. This spell handler is just about handling spell states. Can I cast a spell? What is the animation frame of the spell I'm currently casting? Etcetera. Items are included. Get to the point! Etc. 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 Nailed it. I kid you not, I have refactored this system about three times already, and I bet I will probably refactor it once again in the future. Programming is fun. <laughs> Implementing a spell into the game, however, is a bit easier to explain, and a bit more exciting to talk about. Let's make a spell. First, let's add a variant to our spell identifier. Let's call this Fireball. The spell needs information what cooldown it will have, the cost type, how the creature stats will affect this spell, etc. Et and nailed it. Now, the player and crab already has their own attack animation. Why don't we reuse this animation for our new spell? Don't look at this, we don't need to add any new animation. Since every creature can cast any spell, we need to define what animation to use when casting our new spell. I need to specify in all creatures what animation to use. Now, if I forgot to add all of this code, the Rust compiler would catch that and tell me I'm not covering all of the variants. I freaking love Rust. Okay, the boring part out of the way, let's make the spell do stuff in the game. The way I implement spells is that I just make a regular bevy system. This system will listen to the cast spell event. Not the cleanest thing, but I need to make sure that the spell of the spell event is the new spell we are making. That was a weird sentence. The code is self-explanatory. And now, being a bevy system, we can make the spell do basically anything we want. How about the spell when cast changes game settings? How about the spell that spawns whatever? You could do 
anything, but let's make a projectile spawn. If you remember, spells trigger certain animation frames. Well, there is a flag in the cost spell event indicating if this particular frame is a trigger. If there is no spell event, just continue. If we have an animation trigger, time to spawn a projectile. Easy as that. There's one question though, where do we spawn this projectile? Well, at the caster's position. How do we get the caster's position? Well, the spell event has the caster entity. So we can use this caster entity key to query the transform data. Voila! A spell that spawns projectiles. Why don't we add some animation triggers to the crab's animation, just to see what happens. Yeah, that's not OP at all. As you can see, a future design problem could be that you have to be really careful what animations you decide to use for what spell. We finally have a core gameplay loop. Creatures can die, player can die, but for testing reasons I teleport the player up into the air to indicate we died. There is of course a lot to do. Combat isn't that challenging at the moment, it doesn't feel like the most amazing combat system in the world. This is a large focus area for me coming up. Expanding the AI, giving more visual feedback, etc. I'm getting good at that. I have also looked into handling game states, and this is where I spent more time than I should have. I wanted to make the game more presentable, so I made a menu. I even went as far as looking into transition shaders. This took up a large chunk of unnecessary time I could have spent working on the core gameplay loop. I never implemented this transition system because I realized, hey, I should make a game before I make a menu. It sounds obvious now that I say it out loud. One thing I wanna say is that my build first, refactor later mentality worked really well for me. A spell system alone can be really frightening to start coding, not to mention AI. What I did building all of this is that I always made the most easiest, stupidest implementation that I could. And then when I had enough knowledge, I could then refactor everything and package everything into a nice, decent system. That is everything I've done since the last devlog. Now it's time to make my game more fun. Like, subscribe, etc. Oh yeah!